Welcome back to Concepts of Programming. In today's video, we're going to tackle our second official project, the maze. So with our previous project, and most likely projects in the future, we're going to be using the code that is already categorized in the code tab. So Scratch does a really good job of color coding and organizing the different blocks. And if you look through, all of these different colors and things represent different types of code. Now, there are some sections, which we're going to be calling categories in this video, that aren't used as much, but Scratch still has readily available in its library. So just like with our sprites, how we can choose a sprite from our library, we are going to be choosing a section or an extension of code blocks from Scratch's library. And we're going to do that by going to the bottom and clicking this blue button here. And it's going to direct us to Scratch's library of extensions. For today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at and using the pen extension. So all we have to do is click on this and it's going to show us this new category of different code blocks for the pen. So with our sprite and our first project, what we basically looked at was the cat moving. And we did this with the motion blocks. So if I click the move 10 steps, our cat is just going to be gliding or moving across the screen. With our pen tab, the basic idea to remember about this is we're basically treating our sprite, because we're coding in the section of the sprite, as a pen. So when we're moving it and we don't import the pen, it's just going to move directly. But with the pen function, what we're going to be doing is we are going to basically take this sprite, turn it into a pen, set it down on the backdrop, and have it actually draw things. So the first block we need to use is before we start, we need to click on or run the block pen down. So if I click on this, first of all, there's no apparent difference because nothing's really happening. But what happens is that when I click the move 10 steps button and I continue to click it, it's actually going to treat our avatar as a pen and it's going to draw a thin line. So now wherever my sprite moves, it's going to draw a pen line. Now there's one main problem with this, which is that when I move it around more and more, and I continue moving it, the screen keeps all of these lines. And we don't want that because it'd get really messy when you run the project multiple times. So what we're going to do next is we are going to look at this block here, the erase all block, and we're basically going to clear the entire screen. So if I drag this over and I click on it or I run it, the entire screen and our entire playground resets. So what we're going to do first is we are going to use our event block and we are going to erase all every time the green flag is clicked. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to save us a lot of hassle later on so we don't have to continually click the erase all button every time we want to reset our screen. So you might have noticed that our pen block, when we move, it basically just draws a thin purple line. But what we can do is we can change the settings of this line. And the first way we can do that is by the color. So there are two blocks here about color. The first one is going to be set pen color to, and then it's going to show a color. And the next one is going to be change pen color by 10. So we're going to look at both of these blocks. With the set pen color two, when I click on this as shown here, there are three main different values. So we have our color, which is going to show the red to red rainbow. We have saturation, which an easy way to think about it is how much white we're adding to the color. And then we have brightness, which is basically how bright or dark the color is. Down here, we also have this weird looking tool, and this is going to be an eyedropper for color. What it basically does is when I click on this, it basically allows me to take colors from certain pixels, and when I click on it, it's going to give me the exact color as shown here. And the great thing about Scratch's eyedropper is it has this nice ring around it that tells you exactly what color you're picking up. The other thing we can do is we can change pen color by 10. 
So with this one, again, there's this drop down arrow. I can change color saturation, brightness, or transparency. And those are just going to be the values here. So right now, we're just going to stick with color. And what it does is when I set pen color to this and I move 10 steps, we have this orange color. But then when I change my pen color by let's go 30 to make it more visible and I move 10 steps again, it's a completely different color because what we're doing is we're basically adding 10 or adding 30 to our color. So right now we're at 10, but when we add 30, we go all the way up to 40. And since we actually clicked on it multiple times by adding 30 again, what we're doing is we're actually getting all the way up to 70. And obviously we are going to reset this again. And when I click on it, the color should go back. But what it basically does is these two allow me to change the color of my pen. And we're just going to be using that in our program later. Now you might have noticed when I move my cat 10 steps, it draws a very thin line. And the way we can change this is through change pen size and set pen size. So with these two, what they do is when I change the pen size by one, I increase by one. So when I click on this, and I'm going to drag my cat back here to show the difference, and I move 10 steps, the difference between this line and this line is just going to be one pixel. When I set pen size to one, I don't change the original value. What I do is I directly set the value of the pen size to one. So I'm going to clear the screen and when I move 10 steps, it's going to directly set to one. And what this means is I can actually create a sort of loop here. So I'm going to erase all, set pen color, pen down, and I'm going to use my control loop, repeat 10, and I'm going to move 10 steps. So when I click a green flag, and I drag this away, the pen size is going to slowly increase. The other thing I can do is when I click the green flag again, it's just going to get bigger because I didn't reset the pen size. So I'm also going to set my pen size in the very beginning so that every time I click the green flag, it resets back to one. The other thing I can do is I can have it change pen color by 15. And now what this is going to do is it's going to create a rainbow line. So that's really cool. The other thing we are going to learn about is going to be broadcasting. Quick note, this is not related to the pen. This is a completely different section. I'm going to erase all first. But what broadcasting does is when I have multiple sprites, I'm going to bring in the flying cat to demonstrate. When I code here and I code here, they're completely different. So there's not much correlation or there's no real way I can put them together or say, have this co run code and then have this run code right after this runs code, except for broadcasting. So a good example of this is let's say I want this cat to move across the screen and then once the cat finishes, I want this cat to move across the screen. So I'm going to have one green flag clicked, move 200 steps. So it's going to move 200 steps. I'm also going to pen up to make sure my cat doesn't bring a line and erase all first. So when I click the green flag, it's going to move 200 steps, but it doesn't tell me when this cat is going to start. So if we were doing something like a relay race, let's just say with these two cats, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to broadcast a message from this cat. So what it's going to do is it's going to run 200 steps and once it's moved 200 steps, it's just going to broadcast this message and that's actually not going to do anything. The reason is I need to receive the message and the easiest way to do this is when I receive message one. The idea is when this cat receives message one, it's going to do some stuff. So I'm going to have it also move 200 steps. And when I click the green flag, it's really fast and this is because I need to add a weight. So now when I click green flag, it's going to move 200 steps, wait one second, broadcast the message, and then have my other sprite move 200 steps. And this is great, and it's going to be used in our program today. The final main thing we're going to look at is hide and show. So with this sprite, in our first lesson, we covered how we can show and hide directly here, but it also works with code blocks. 
So what I can do is I can have a show at the very beginning, wait one second, hide, and then wait one second again, and then I'm going to have it show again. So when I click the green flag, it's going to show, second, hide, second, show. And that's all we need to start today's program. The first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to import our maze. So for this bit, it doesn't actually matter what maze you use. I'm going to use my introductory maze, but the only thing you need to have is a starting point, some kind of clear path, and then a red sort of block for the ending. So what you can do is if you don't have a maze or you just want to use the example, go to Hi CS Kitty or this link and then click the remix button. So I'm gonna do that and then come back here. So I have have this background now and the first thing I need to do is I need to add my sprite. So we need some kind of sprite to take us through the maze. And for this project, I'm going to choose from the scratch library and pick the ball. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to look at the costumes and scratch has a ton of different colors already built in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete the costumes of the colors I don't need. This isn't necessary, but I think it's just nice to keep and nice to do. And now that we have our sprite, we're going to start with the coding. So obviously this is a maze and every maze needs a starting point. With move the cat, we mentioned how when I move the ball here, it's going to actually move the go to X and Y coordinates to directly where my ball is right now. So in this example, all we need to do is bring it to the front, make sure there is some space in between, and then I'm going to drag over a go to. The exact coordinates aren't that important as long as it's not touching any of the black. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to go to X 155, Y 121. And again, if I move it here, as soon as I click the green flag, it's going to pop back there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to set up the pen before we start the project. So we're going to set our pen color to something. It doesn't exactly matter, but I'm just going to use this blue color. We are going to set the size to 7. And make sure that you're not changing the pen size by 7, but setting it. Because changing it means every time we click the green flag, it's going to change and increase 1 or 7. But we want it to set directly to 7 to be nice and visible. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pen up, make sure to erase everything, and then pen down so that my line shows. So with these blocks of code, my balls should be resetting every time. Now for the next bit, notice that a lot of projects we do are just going to have a forever loop and then the code inside, mostly just because we're just going to keep running it forever. The way the maze project works is that our user is going to be using the arrow keys to control the ball. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the if statement. So notice with the if statement, Scratch has a really nice way of changing the shape of every block to tell you exactly where it can go. We have this sort of hexagon here, and if I drag this in, the idea of an if statement is that if whatever we drag in here, then it's going to run the code inside here. So if this statement isn't true, it's just not going to run the code inside of the if statement. Now, the different types of things with this shape are going to be in various different sections. But for this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the sensing section. Since we're using arrow keys, we are going to use the key pressed. So when I drag this over, notice that it highlights to show we can drag it in. And if I read the statement, it's just going to go if key space pressed, then blah, blah, blah. So what this means is that when I press my space key, all of the things inside of the forever loop are going to happen, or all the things inside of this section here are going to happen. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to code the left arrow. And first of all, we need to make sure to point it in the right direction. So I'm going to point it in the direction and click here for scratches. Really nice pointing direction thing. And I'm going to point it to the left or minus 90. And then I'm going to have it move 10 steps. 
Notice we could change x by negative 10, and that would do the exact same thing. But since we did that for our last project, we are going to use a different mode or a different version for this project, just to introduce the different types. And then we're going to do the same thing, but opposite for our right key. So we're going to do our if again and put it outside. So this if is going to go inside the forever, but outside the left arrow. And you know this because they are connected here. And then we're going to do the same thing of key. And then this time we're going to go right arrow pressed. Then we are going to point it in the direction 90 for right. And then we're also going to move it 10 steps. So if I were to run my program right now, what it does is I can move left and right with my arrow keys and the ball can move freely. When I click the green flag, it's just going to reset because of all of the things here. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for up and down. So we're going to go if the up arrow pressed, then we are going to point in direction zero. And that's going to be because when I move my arrow up, it's going to point to zero. And then we're still going to move 10 steps. We're going to do the same thing for down, but opposite again. So if down, if the down arrow is pressed, then we are going to point in direction 180 because with this 180 is going to be pointing down. And then we're also going to move 10 steps. So when I click the green flag, by now I should be able to move in all directions. Now this technically could be a working maze program except for one main thing. The actual maze isn't doing anything. So my ball is just going to pass the borders and keep going. And we need to fix that. So what we're going to do is we are going to add another thing. No, we're not. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to add, first of all, a way to win and then a way to keep it in the maze. So what we're going to do is inside the forever loop, but outside the keys, we're going to add another if. This time we are going to use a color sensing. So the color sensing is just going to be touching color blank. And when I drag this over, we have the same color options from pen. In the beginning of this video, I briefly mentioned the eyedropper tool. And this is right now why the eyedropper tool is useful. When I take the exact red of the exit, I can make sure that once the ball is touching the red of the exit, it's going to win. And to show when, what we're going to do is we are going to use broadcasting. And we are going to write a new message. This message is just going to be called win. Now with our last project, we talk about the stop all block. And this is going to be useful because once you've won, we're not going to allow the player to keep going. It's just going to stop everything, stop the forever loop. So when I click the green flag and I go to the red, it's going to stop everything. So with broadcasting, I need something to receive the broadcasting. And here is where we're going to add a new sprite. Instead of going to the library though, we're going to be using paint. So when I click on paint, I have all of these different tools. And for this, we're going to be using the text tool. And to use the text tool, all I do is I click somewhere and I can type freely. So for this, we're going to make a text box that says you win. And it's just going to be for when our user wins. Scratch has really handy fonts here, and for this, I'm gonna be using the pixel font. It really doesn't matter that much. I can change the size by directly adjusting the arrows and the corners, and I can map it up here. The coordinates are just going to be the coordinates of this cross here. I'm going to change the fill to this red, and then I'm gonna move it down here. So when our player wins, it's just going to display you win in the middle of the screen. So obviously right now, this is a little bit bothersome because it's just hanging there. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our show and hide blocks. When the green flag is clicked and when the project starts, we are going to hide this. So it's just not going to show up and our user won't even know it's there. 
But when we receive the wind broadcast, or basically in this case, when the ball is touching the red here, what it's going to do is it's going to first show. And then just to make sure that it works, we are going to make it go to its current location. So when I click this, it's going to go right here. Now let's try this. I can move my ball around, and once I hit this, it's going to display you win. So our project is almost done. But the final and probably most important step we need is to make sure the ball cannot touch any of the boundaries of our maze. And to do this, we are going to add another if and broadcast. What this is going to do is it's going to make the user lose. So we're going to go if touching color black, because in this, the only way we're going to touch the color black is going to be when we hit the boundaries. The black here actually won't be important because it's going to hit the red first and there is a nice border of red around the exit. So we're going to say if our ball is touching the color black, oh, this is the wrong one, if the ball is touching the color black, we are going to broadcast another message. Make sure that when you broadcast, we aren't broadcasting win because these two need to be totally different broadcasts. So we're going to new message and let's just say lose. And then again, we are going to stop all. When I click the green flag, it's going to stop all as soon as I hit the black. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with you win, but I'm going to make a you lose. So I'm going to add another sprite with the paint text, and I'm going to just type you lose. And the great thing about scratch is it's going to automatically have the same color and parameters here. And then I'm going to move it here. So we are going to type pretty much the same code because we are going to make sure it disappears once the green flag is clicked because we don't want a giant you lose in the middle either. And then we are going to go when I receive lose, make sure that this is lose and not win. I'm going to go to my current location and then I'm going to show. So right now we're actually pretty much done we should have a working code. So when I click the green flag and I move and I hit the black, it's going to display you lose and the game is over. So some things I can do to make the game easier is change the size of the ball to something like 50, which is basically going to make the white space a lot bigger and the game overall a lot easier and allow me to win. Or to make it harder, I can do the exact opposite and change it to something like 110. So that's going to be the end of our second project. Thank you for watching the video and come in next time.